In this episode, we're looking at the TD-8 8954TH. 200 watt Class D stereo amplifier. We're gonna run this one through its paces and see how it sounds. Okay, in this episode, we're gonna test this monster of a Class D amplifier. This one here, the rated power. This one's using a TDA, it's actually using a set of TDA 8954TH chips. There's two of them in here. If we look down the heat sink, I don't know if you guys can see underneath here or not, but there's one chip here and there's another one on the other side. These are surface mounted chips with this massive heat sink on because these suckers can produce incredible amounts of power. Check out the size of the inductors here on the output. I mean, these are heavy duty, you know, good. That's a good one, about a number uh, 16 gauge, I guess, wire on here. 16 or 18 gauge wire on the actual inductors. So this thing here is going to have a fair bit of power. Check out all the caps on here. It's got uh, four 1000 microfarad 50 volt rated caps per bank. And this sucker requires 24 volts AC. Now I don't have a 24 volt transformer. I went and robbed my little dual 18 transformer from a little hybrid amp. So I'm only going to be able to run this at Plus or minus, or, or should say 18 volts. So um, we won't be able to get full power, but we should still be able to get some pretty darn good volume out of this thing. I've connected the unit to the tone board to use this as the attenuator that we looked at in the last video. I'm gonna put power to this thing now. Okay, we got a nice blue light because you know they like blue lights on everything. Let's uh, check this thing out. I've got it hooked up to my test speakers. sound too bad at all it actually sounds pretty damn good Just noticed that the center <laughs> I've lost my my return my neutral the solder is broken here so let's just fix that and we'll continue this test So I fixed up the connection on the transformer here, and this was uh, this was never intended to be permanent, right? When I was using it for testing, and because I've used solid wire, it's uh, flexing it around a bit, it caused me to lose a connection. So now we've re we've fixed that. That hopefully will stop this thing from cutting out when I crank it up. see this unit actually uses two separate rectifiers here one for each channel because it's it, this is a dual mono design even though it's on the same board as you can see the board is heavy it's it's, it's a double sided board it's got a lot of shielding on here this is to obviously shield it for RF suppression because uh, these are being a, 
a pulse with modulated output uh, it can radiate a bit of RF so they're shielding the board relatively well here on this bottom side anyway haven't detected any noticeable heat on the heat sink although I'm not driving this thing very hard uh, I will be driving it a little bit harder I'm gonna shut the camera off when I crank it up because you guys aren't gonna hear it anyway because it's gonna just distort all the microphone but I, I want to cut this thing loose and see what it actually can do let's look at some of the scope outputs on here and we'll see what type of voltage we can get out of this thing to ignore what we saw here before because I'm I'm set for a times 10 probe and I had my probe in times 1 so that was affecting the voltage here so I set it to the right voltage so now we'll see what the voltage is that we're going to get out of this thing when I crank it up Looks like I'm getting around 50 volts or so um, peak to peak out of this thing before I start to get into the clipping. Now remember, I'm only feeding this with with a dual 18 supply, so it's supposed to have a dual 24 supply for optimum performance. So I'm not going to get quite as much power as this thing is capable of. But I can tell you right now that was uncomfortably loud, and I'm sure that. Even though it's not going to come across on camera as being this loud, I'm, I'm sure my neighbors probably haven't appreciated me running it at that level for, for a few minutes there because, uh, yeah, this thing actually puts out a pretty good level of, of uh, volume. I've got the tone control set flat for all three tones, by the way. At this point, I'm not adding any bass, treble, or mid-range. I'm going to go to a that vocal track and we'll see how that one sounds. Same. 
Shuffle through the same routine White deep blue jeans Looking at me back at me Get myself together Come whatever Just like yesterday And every other day As I rush See when I test I usually leave my Test AM transmitter on In fact my little AM transmitter That I use For testing radios I have a an FM tuner plugged into it and typically what I normally do is uh, when I'm testing something on the channel I will tune it in and put royalty free content over my little AM transmitter and uh, that way I can test radios out but when I'm not testing product on camera where I have to play royalty free music I normally have it hooked up to just that little FM module that I received a while back and I just have it basically rebroadcasting it at commercial FM station on AM so that I can play around with my antique radios and listen to my antique radios and stuff around the house. And I've just found that this thing here, if I just stick my fingers in here, will actually hear. <laughs> That's how strong this AM transmitter is that's behind me. The antenna is actually on the back wall. It's 400 milliwatts, which isn't a lot of power, um, it has enough range to go about a block before it fades away. But it sure is strong in here. It's to say I can pick it up on my scope. And I, every time I was putting my hands around this thing, every time I touch anything, it's rectifying. It's rectifying the AM signal. So I was wondering, why am I hearing music? And then I realized it's it's just picking up from my other transmitter because it's so strong. But that gives you an idea. If I'm not touching the thing, it actually, we're not getting any interference at all on this module here. Only if I stick my fingers into the audio circuits right around here, the audio in. After the uh, attenuator, because the attenuator is turned down. Right, even if I turn the volume all the way down. Anyway, I found that interesting. That uh, If I turn that thing off, of course, we won't hear anything. But I, I normally leave it turned on because I quite often, I listen to stuff on my old radios just because I, you know, just for something to do. I've got all these old radios. Uh, you've seen some of them on camera. I fixed a few of them, but I actually have other old AM radios and I have old AM stereo radios in the house. And I actually listen to my AM stereo radios from this AM stereo transmitter that I built just because I think it sounds cool and uh, the AM stereo sound actually sounds very good it uh, it's it sounds every bit as good as FM stereo um, but it uh, it uh, has a compressor on board so it actually changes the sound a bit because everything's a little more compressed you don't get the loud and soft passages so I quite often leave my old AM stereo radio on just running in the background because the the compressor on the transmitter that I built uh, reduces a dynamic range to the point where everything's staying at about the same level. And for background music, that's nice because if you have a quiet song, at least you can hear it. If you have something that's, if something that's really loud, and when I'm putting a commercial station uh, over the transmitter, um, you know, it's quite often there's there's variations between soft and loud passages, and this will just tend to equalize them out. And it's kind of cool to listen on an AM radio, but I thought that was kind of neat. That this thing here is acting like a rectifier and picking things up. Anyway, uh, this little app sounds really good. Let's take a look at the, if I can, I'm going to look at the switched output. I don't know where I'm going to pick up here. I might be able to get it off the choke here and we'll see if we can see what the switched outputs look like on this one. So I've just given myself a little test stake here onto the switched output so we can look at the switched frequency and our amplitude and take a look at that. Let me just fire the scope over here. So as we can see our peak to peak amplitude is 47 volts and that's feeding it with plus and minus 18 so obviously that's going to be higher with the correct voltage in but that's all that I can do because the only transformer I have is this one although I may go and get myself a 24, like 24, 0, and 24 transformer just to see what the potential of the board is. But these transformers are not exactly cheap. So to do that, I'm going to end up spending probably $50 on a transformer. 
just to see if I can get a few more watts out of this thing. But for what I'm hearing off this thing is sounding excellent. So now if you look at the, the, the actual waveform, 343 kilohertz is the frequency that the PWM switch runs at. 51 volts is the peak to peak voltage. Let's get some volume through here. Uh, let's play some music here. Here we go. That's about all I can show you on this. Uh, quite often I'll test these things with a tone. Uh, this thing's got so much bloody power that it's going to blow my speakers if I try to drive this thing up to full power because these speakers here are only rated at 100 watts and this amplifier is capable of pushing over 200 watts with the correct voltage of course going into it. Now I'm not running the correct voltage on here, I'm only running it at three quarters of its rated voltage so instead of getting 210, well, we'll call it 200 watts. Um, would be peak. So I with with, with 75 percent of its voltage, uh, maybe 150 watts maximum. So music power wise, more like 100 watts of power, 100 to 120 watts of power is probably all I'm going to get out of this thing. All I can tell you is when I turn this thing up here, I can get the uh, woofers on these speakers rattling to the point where they're they're. Well, if I crank up the bass, they are actually hitting the end of their travel, and I can hear the wires uh, starting to to uh, snap as they hit the end of the travel. So this thing does have plenty of power. Uh, I don't want to put it on a tone generator just because uh, I don't have speakers that can handle it. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video when I can get some big 6 or 4 ohm resistors that are actually capable of handling the kind of current that this thing will actually be able to put out. But uh, I mean obviously to get the full rated power out of this thing you're going to need 24 volts and a few more amps than probably what I've got on this transformer. This is just an 80 VA uh, transformer so you need a bit bigger one to get the full rated power out of this thing but giving the giving the, the voltage that I'm giving it and the current that I'm giving it this thing here uh, is enough to rattle the windows. It, uh, you, you can't appreciate it on camera because it's only going to distort if I turn it up but uh, believe me this thing goes plenty loud enough and it, it, it overpowers my other amplifier easily my little Sony app, which is only, I think it's rated at 50 watts per channel, this little Sony on my test bench here, but this thing here goes far louder than that. And the sound quality of it is actually not bad. It's Class D, um, you know, there's going to be the Class A, B purists out there that are going to say Class D is crap, but Class D actually, the newer ones actually do sound very respectable. And I would certainly, and I will be using this in a project, and I probably will be using it in a project along with this build it into a nice little box with a power transformer and I'll have myself a nice little high power very small amplifier. Anyway, link to this one's also on the video. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.